Well, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. This is um, this is my last uh, scheduled uh, Thursday evening call for the year. I may do some more in uh, November, December, but I just wanted to, you know, end it now for the schedule, the regular schedule. And I just wanted to just say a, a few brief things about what I just noticed this trend is becoming more apparent um, in, in things we're having to deal with. I mean, I know that a lot of you listen to me because we're talking about um, cash flow and, and and money and taxes and things like that and cryptos and, and whatnot. But there's a bigger picture and I think you're starting to see this. I'm probably preaching to the choir, but I just wanted to introduce you to this this interview. And I, I posted the link in Ace of Coins and also I put it here in the uh, chat room. And it's this very brief interview, half hour or so. And um, this woman is explaining about how private membership associations, unions, um, I mean, they, they go by different names, but are it looks like are being used more and more now to get around the state legislative power. Um, and so there, this is being done through a statute that's adopted by the state legitimately. And then an agency then writes its regulations to implement the rules or the provisions or whatever. And then it gets its funding and things like this. But now what's happening is some of these regulatory bodies that are writing these regulations like Cal OSHA, for example, Cal EPA, right? The, the federal franchise in California of the EPA. That's what I call it. Um, it looks like these types of organizations are forming their own organizations or their own consulting boards or boards of directors or not even municipalities. They're just like associations. In fact, we already have associations of um, government offices such as your sheriff. Your sheriff is a constitutional office. It's not a department, okay? I know we refer to the sheriff's department as a department. It's not, it's an office. But the fact that there's a sheriff in every county and there's probably, I'm going to say, 3,000 counties, there could be more, maybe 10,000, I don't know, 3,000 counties in the whole country, that in itself is an association and it's a private membership association. And if you acknowledge that and you gain a hold on that, you can probably write some sort of charter out for that association that already exists. You don't have to go to any trouble. You can just start having meetings of the sheriffs, right? Annual meetings, right? And they come to the meetings and they have whatever beneficial knowledge or whatever. They're sharing notes or new policies or talking about equipment, right? So these associations already exist. And when we're dealing with like, for example, the IRS, you're not just dealing with the IRS, you're dealing with the Department of Justice and lawyers and accountants and courts and, and judges and, and they're all connected. And you, you already know this. But we just have to step back and look. I think we should look and see that these associations can be used to destroy things that make our society solid, uh, that have built our society. But I think right now they're being used to destroy it, to bring it down. Um, I just I think that we are we also have the ability to use our own associations. We have a lot of power. It's like the example I'm giving, um, you know, regarding the homeowners association that actually has lien rights and those lien rights are not exhaustible. They, they don't get exhausted by a foreclosure. The lien rights are perpetual, even though they're not superior to most other liens. In fact, they're probably the least priority lien there is, but they don't go away. So we have power and we right now, we're pretty much getting our butts kicked by these associations. And so we just acknowledge that, yeah, that's what's happening. And when we acknowledge that, I think we can then realize that there's a plan on the way out. I don't think that, plan is like you may have seen in the movies or may have when you're when you were younger thought I'm going to vote our way back to freedom <laughs> right or I'm going to make it so much money that I'm going to be free I mean some people think that they're just going to be become rich and sure you can do that and you have a bit more freedom but you're still not free if you live in a society where other people around you are not anyways I just want to I, I made a, a short list here and um I just want to just draw this to your attention so um Labor unions are private membership associations. They have huge power in lawmaking. They make their own laws almost. You almost have a situation where associations are making their own laws. We saw this in the last few years about the so-called mandates, right? There's no mandate. They just had an association that just everybody did the same thing. Well, you could do the same thing too and break the law. I'm not saying we should do that, but that's what's going on. The, the biggest one we're facing right now, okay, in the last couple of years, this cult that's pushed this fake uh, public health emergency uh, is part of the climate change agenda. 
look at all the things going on with that. They even got the climate change agenda even has its own accounting system. Now I don't know how you all know uh, how, what you understand about climate change, but that's a total hoax also. Maybe y'all know that. Um, but anyways, look at what's going on around us. Look at all the associations that we're being subjected to. I think even the DMV arguably is an association. So let me just summarize something. So we've got taxes we all understand. We want to try to minimize actual taxes. I'm not talking about sales tax. I'm talking about income taxes. We all talk about that. We want to do transactions so we minimize our taxes. Well, we don't realize that, we don't talk about it that much, but the use of money, if it's done improperly, is going to tax your ability to grow money. So I would argue that a pension fund is a tax because the way it's being used, it's being used to exploit you, whoever has pension funds. It's a ridiculous idea that you're gonna take a part of your money and give it to somebody that you don't know, that somehow he's gonna do something miraculous with it so that when you retire, you'll benefit. In the meantime, you don't have rights to it for the most part. That's just stealing. That's lying, cheating, and stealing, okay? So pension funds are just another form of taxation. And I don't care if you get your pension fund. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about you should have the full use of your money and not be lied to and not believe, not be led to believe that someone else can only is only qualified to deal with your, your little bit of savings you're putting aside and that all that savings should be allocated into the stock market. And again, the stock market, another example of taxing people. How is that being done? What is the NASDAQ? What is the Dow? Is that, is that traded? I mean, is that a private association? Y'all can check me on that one. You're going to start seeing a lot of this when you start looking. Bad accounting practices. I got lots of cases where people get bad advice and it triggers an audit that generates all kinds of tax liability that didn't exist before. Or, or cost of litigation, which is worse. Okay. This is all of this is designed to take our value and, and slow us down because you, you take away all this burden off of us. And probably everybody on this call is somewhat of an entrepreneur. And you're just going to become this incredible whirlwind of, of investment, you know, developing businesses and things like that because you're a creative person. But no, we have to deal with all this nonsense. Okay. It's all a tax. Um, you know, bad advice, re the regulatory system. Of course, we all know that's where, you know, a big company doesn't want to compete with you. Amazon, Amazon does things like this. Amazon has its own regulatory framework. I don't know if you ever dealt with Amazon, but um, the regulatory framework itself for the whole country is a way where big business keeps the little guy out. You guys know that, but look at Amazon. So here's what Amazon does. Amazon has the resources to get smoke and deals on products, right? So Amazon doesn't need to take a risk on something, just like McDonald's never needed to take a risk on selling um, uh, overpriced coffee. McDonald's lets Starbucks build that out and take all the risk. And when Starbucks established the market cap for it, McDonald's waltzed in there with its $80 billion trademark and said, hey, we everybody, we got McAfee over here. They were really smart on that. But anyways, the regulations are just another way to tax us. Um, and then, of course, inflation, as we know, that's a tax. So anyways, I don't know how directly relevant this is, but I just I just saw this and it's just, you know, yeah, Social Security also. I mean, when I say pension funds, I mean, Social Security, what a, what a scam that is. I mean, in, in 30 minutes, I can show you what you could have done with the money you put aside for Social Security if you don't know already. And, and I may not have the best ideas and the next guy will probably have interesting ideas and we could all collaborate. I'm just saying for like taking $50 a paycheck, you could make yourself a millionaire in, I want to just say 15 years. I'm exaggerating. It could be 10 years, you know? So yeah, it's, it's all, it's all uh, like that. So it's not so much about the taxes. That's why, you know, I, I'm not just selling when I, when I consult with people and I give them corporations, I'm not selling a corporation because that's, this is not going to necessarily solve your problem. Just like everyone asks me, hey, John, what about a PMA? Will that solve my problem? And what's a PMA? And they tell me, well, uh, it's a document. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. A PMA is a relationship, okay? That's what I'm talking about here. The relationship, the PMA, that, that structure is being used against us right now. And I think we're learning. It's time to start using it for our own benefit. 
okay? And when we talk about, like when I set up structures, I'm not setting up a PMA for you. I'm setting up an LLC. You're going to use the LLC in a certain way. The ownership of the LLC is, is irrelevant, okay? So this is basic learning. We have to get this understood, this basic stuff. But anyways, look around, see what's going on around you. Ask yourself, how does this thing operate over here? Why is that happening? Why, what's the connection? Your county board of supervisors. Was that created by people? I'm gonna bet you that your county board of supervisors, you can do the research on this, is an overlay of the actual elected officials that used to be your county board of supervisors. They just changed the name, you didn't catch it, and now they're literally appointed even though you have an election. Go check it out. That is a private membership association that is usurped your authority because your authority is delegated to the state legislature, not to private clubs. But anyways, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Just want to share that with you. We can do a general Q&A. And um, if there's something interesting that comes up or if you guys get my attention on something, I will certainly uh, schedule a call and we can do more. But what I could do this evening is, and it's being recorded, um, uh, we can we can do Q&A if you guys want. If you want to raise your hand and ask a question about something, hopefully maybe you have something that's relative to what I was just talking about. What do you guys have, anything? I put some new videos, I see a hand raise. I put some new videos um, on, in the members area and I think, I, yeah, I did put them on the Ace of Coins list on Telegram. Who's that? Oh, Todd, hey, what's up, Todd, what's going on? Hey, John, um, I was, uh, have, I, I uh, have an acquaintance that uh, developed a product and he's a biochemist that right. actually removes heavy metals from mm. this, this, the cel cellular tissue, even in the brain. And is very, very successful. He was sharing it with people. There were uh, parents with autistic kids that came in, begged mm -hmm. him to uh, allow, allow them to try it, and uh, gave him a voice. He was incredible. Nice. This is happening more and more. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, so he started helping other people that, uh, that were diagnosed with having uh, heavy metal toxicity, and they were having uh, autoimmune issues and so on yeah. and so on. And then the FDA found out about it and came in and shut him down. Yeah. So the FDA is uh, a government agency, but it's a PMA. It really is. Yeah. So I was, um, I was wondering if I could, uh, you know, give him your contact information. Maybe you could help set him up where he can sidestep that nonsense. Yeah. And that's the thing about the PMA. I mean, just having a document itself is not, not the solution. It's actually being a PMA. It's doing things so they can't see you. But yeah, sure. I can, I can talk with him. So you could yeah, you could explain that to him much better than I would, but I think it's important for him to get that information out. Okay, thank you. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, I appreciate that, Todd. And somebody's asking um, about uh, a crypto question. Of course, <laughs> I think most people want to know about crypto questions. But um, hey, swaps hey, and crypto as well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, hey, it's Chris. Um, and I know you've covered this on a number of your videos, but I I'm going to try to make this specific. And it was with swaps, crypto to crypto. And I was just reviewing some IRS 2021 pubs. And it sounds like everything, if you test it, it's really, if it changes, sorry about the background noise, but it's, it just sounds like if it changes beneficiary or you, um, it's called, uh, golly, I'm sorry. Uh, when you actually liquidate the asset, dispose, dispose of the asset. If the beneficial interest in party changes. Yeah. Correct. So even that swap question that's in like pub 502, it specifically states a swap for a swap is considered a taxable event, but that doesn't still doesn't apply if, if it's the same beneficiary, correct? That's correct. If the beneficial interests do not change, if you still care about the property after the swap, then there's no disposition and then there's no, uh, there's no gain there or loss. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm still using those litmus tests with everything I review. But. That's the easy one to do. Do yeah. I still care about this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so this is being used, this, this misinformation, okay, this misclassifying, misleading statements being used to trick, trick people into creating a tax liability by reporting it as if it were a tax liability. And then it becomes that. So yeah. that's what we're faced and, with. And what, what rings so strong and true is that it's classified as property, 
by the IRS, which you always state, you know, uh, it goes hand in hand with gold and yeah. real estate and all these other things, but they're trying yeah. to do some sort of bait and switch the way they describe it in some of those pubs. But anyways, without taking too much of your time, that, that was my question. And yeah. It sounds like good it brings true. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And then somebody else is asking about uh, how can I get cryptos without getting involved in biometric facial, facial scan? Well, when you go to buy cryptos, don't use any of your biometric data. That means your eye, your palm of your hand, no fingerprint, nothing like that. I don't know where, but anytime you're faced with it, walk away. You know, that's, that's all I can tell you. Master plan for getting people free. I mean, see, I, we, I had this problem back in the 90s. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we have to save the world, you know? It's all a scam. We have to tell everybody. And I, I ran into a brick wall, you know, because, you know, you, you try to tell somebody the whole story. They just don't want to hear it. It's too big. So what I figured was I would just quit my job. And I was single at the time, so I could, you know, live on the street. Right. So I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to do this full time and I'm going to find out where I can actually help a person. I don't he doesn't need to know the whole picture, but if he wants to know, we can talk about it. And I still do it that way. So that's what you want to do is you want to work in your own self-interest and you want to do the thing that you're promising someone that you're going to do. And I have a set of ethics that I follow that I've developed over the years. And so this is what I do. This is hopefully answering your question. The master plan is I can influence those people around me. And when I do that, I'm going to do that as perfectly as I can. And that's the best I can do because I figured I'd learned the hard way trying to persuade large groups of people that I don't have a relationship with that don't need me for anything is not going to work. It's wasting my time. Now, writing a book is different. You should write a book. And I, and I have people don't, people didn't read them. People don't care, you know? And so I use the book to promote myself. So I didn't really care about the publishing of it, but the videos and so forth. So if I can make a video and I can keep that ethic of how do I help this person with the situation? And I have a, a finite list of those people and I don't go too far out of that then I'm, I think I'm going to be effective. And I think that's what everybody should be doing. Each of you has an area of expertise. Some of you are really good at real estate investing. That's a power. That's something you can do. We need, we need to clean up this mess. Now, it's a little bit too early, I think, in real estate, but we, we've got things coming up, okay? Some of you are engineers. Maybe you're out of work. I'm going to tell you right now, 3D printing is the future. I'll also tell you that liquid fuels and gas are the future. So master plan for getting people free, People have to realize what that is for themselves. What is that for yourselves? So I'll do what I can do. Implications of Colorado become the first US state to accept Bitcoin. Okay, so they're gonna make it taxable. So when the government of Colorado accepts Bitcoin as a matter of law to pay taxes, it will then become a currency to, that's taxable and its definition will change. You'll watch, you watch, it will change to a currency. And it will be exactly like the dollar. So everything I tell you about cryptos not being taxable will be different with Colorado and Bitcoin because it will become the dollar. If I can pay dollar debts with it, then it is the dollar. Uh, yeah, so I don't really care, by the way, because uh, we can create any coins we want. We can not use Bitcoin and I can use dollars and still not have a tax liability. So, you know, just understand what you're dealing with. Yeah, that's good. I appreciate that, Todd. Yeah, we want to know the whole picture. It helps us make decisions. Um, county commissioners are controlled by a PMA. Well, go look at your county commissioners and go look at um, the charter under which the Board of Supervisors, for example, or your county commissioners, they call it differently. When, how was that formed? When was it formed? And what preceded it? And you're going to you're going to see what I'm talking about, because my bet is that you're going to find that it wasn't formed officially. It was just formed by appointment. Someone just formed a group of people and gave them a name and they took over the government quietly. It's not see a, a charter that it expresses the function and power of people is going to be accountable to the people. This is how you know if it's not accountable to people, even if it says on paper, it's accountable to people and it's not, then it's not part of your government because you are the government. So I guess that's the best way to explain it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch over here to Heather. She's been patient. What's going on, Heather? Um, hello, um, I just have a question. I'm, I'm, I'm going through the videos, like I'm kind of a beginner, beginner stage or whatever. And so um, 
the first 24 videos is what I'm trying to get through. And I'm only at video number 15. So I have a tendency to get ahead of myself. And if that's the case with my question, and I need to just continue watching the rest of the videos to get my answer, then that you yeah, just okay. let me know. But um, sure. so I'm at the part where um, the change of residency and basically I'm, I'm following that you need to rescind um, how you're established as a resident. So like your driver's license and, and so forth, but like I have a professional nursing license. So how would you rescind that? You don't need to rescind a license. Rescind a license. Keep a license okay, and no. stay functional. Yeah, you're fine. What's a, what is the purpose of why you don't want to be a resident? Because sometimes it's a good idea. What are you trying to do? Well, I don't know. I'm still in the process of listening to all these videos. And okay. so th I'm, that's the 15th video is change your residency and why uh, you should do it. And so I'm I'm not all the way through with all of the videos yet. So I'm not for sure exactly what the benefit of that is per se. So and I'm sure it's because I'm ahead of myself. It's just because I'm excited. OK, but all right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So I would I suggest to you that you retain your professional licensing and your state licensing in the same state and, and just benefit from it. I don't see any problem with that. Now, if there was a problem with it that non-residency would cure, then sure, then we can make a decision on something. But other than that, no problem. Okay, okay, thank you. Yep, just understand res residency creates liability and it's okay to be liable for things. I want to be liable for things. If I'm a professional and I'm helping other people, I want them to have a remedy. That's what it's about. You can't deny right. someone a remedy. Yeah, you're not going to, there is a, there is a point where you, you have to be in that system. You can also disclaim liability, like with your driver's license, you can file a disclaimer of liability under the statutes because you're not using the public rights of way in commerce. And how would, I, I think I heard you say that the last um, Zoom meeting about uh, the driver's license. So, and how would you like make that declaration that I think you had mentioned that your daughters were or, or somebody was were getting yeah. maybe it was another video, but I thought it yeah, was it's, a, it's a public video. it's a public declaration, meaning it would have to be recorded or published in the public. So one way to do it is in the county recorder's office, and maybe it looks like an affidavit. Okay. Maybe it's going to be in the newspaper. I don't know. If it's driver's license, I'm going to publish it in my county. I don't know exactly where. Maybe it's going to be in the newspaper. And it doesn't need to be long. It could be like a little paragraph or a few lines disclaiming liability. What would it say? Uh, here's a simple version. I, and give my full legal name, disclaim any liability that may be established for having a driver's license in this state under the motor vehicle code known as blah, 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 whatever citation it is. Okay. And and again, I don't know exactly why you don't want, I'd want to do that, but it would be quite interesting to do that to maybe separate the concept of I'm using the public rights of way as a matter of right from as a privilege. And if you got a traffic ticket to argue that case, uh, based upon the fact uh, that you did the, the uh, disclaim liability for using the public rights of way for commerce. <laughs> and that's the only way you can be taxed and regulated, right? Right. So the other aspect of this too is that um, the public rights of way are managed under easement rights. They're the, it's the right of using private property. So the private property rights were conveyed to the what we now have as the police and it's under the promise of uh, public safety and collecting taxes these are legitimate functions of government but these are these are administered under easement rights <clears throat> these are easement rights and so if i disclaim liability for using a public right of way when it's not when i'm not involved in commerce i have every right to do that and it's now a matter of record right so if i'm the private citizen that gave the right, the easement right for the police to administer public safety and, and taxation, then what right does the, the does the police have to then tax me for the use of the public right of way when I'm using it as a matter of right? How can the police tax me when I'm the one that gave them the taxing right in the first place? So by by filing a disclaimer, you're establishing that as a matter of record. I guess that's to, to take a little more complicated. And the only way I would do something like that is if, if I were gonna test a case. And so I would file a disclaimer with that understanding and, and maybe I'll get a traffic ticket. And then I'll argue the case, I'll make the record in the uh, trial court knowing full well that that court has 
not the willingness to rule in my favor. And I don't want it to rule in my favor. I want it to rule against me so that I have the power to appeal it. And I have to be ready to go to the appeals court and make my point. And that's the only reason I spend my time to do that in that situation, unless I had a certain problem I'm dealing with. Um, there was another situation I was talking, I was consulting with the other day where a change in residency took place and it got rid of the child protective services. Just, it just worked out that way. So, and in fact, before I even understood that was the conclusion of it, I was telling them about the residency situation. And then they, when they told me the whole story, I was like, okay, well, you guys pretty much solved your own problem. And the way they described it is they were so afraid of the situation, they thought that was still a problem. And I said, no, there's not actually a problem. You guys solved it by changing your residency. So it's interesting. Does that, does that help? I know that's a long answer. But... All right. So yeah, you're muted. So did you want to? Okay. I said, no, I'm sorry. I saw it was awesome. muted. Yeah, no, okay, that awesome. helps. I appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. And should we, should we make Elaine wait longer? <laughs> no, she'll hate me. What's going on, Elaine? Oh, oh, okay. This is a silly question. Can you define beneficial interest? Okay, sure. If you care about the thing. That's all? That's it. If you ask an attorney, he'll give you some long convoluted statutory construction, whatever. But no, it's if you care about it, so, you still retain the beneficial interest. If I if I go on vacation for a week and I give my dog to my neighbor and ask him to take care of him and feed him and stuff, I didn't sell my dog. I didn't give him away. I still care about him. I want him back. Hmm. Mm. Okay. That same goes for a car or a lump of gold. If I still care about it, then I didn't sell it, did I? No, right. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So you didn't, if you the definition know, of sale is I got rid of the thing for something else. I really wanted more. Then I don't care about the thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's taxable. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one other thing, um, the, um, if he calls us, Smith calls uh, to hopefully tomorrow morning, uh, to confirm some kind of an appointment, uh, can I just leave a message for you? W will you check Telegram or should yes, I? Yes, please. I will check. And isn't it interesting that the IRS agent you're dealing with is called Agent Smith? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that for real or what? Did he make that up? If it, he know. actually seems pretty nice. I, I yeah. don't. He, yeah. He, I don't think he is like a um, particularly out to get me. But right. Right. Um, still can't trust him. No, you can't trust them, but, you know, they, they're nice people, you know, but some of them be. are, yeah, and some of them are incompetent, and some of them, I don't know, it doesn't sound like he has a, 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 some sort of a, a mission against you or something, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Okay. So I'm going to try to answer one of these here. Uh, let's see, you have sent on multiplication in the U.S. Corpus cult. Well, you know, the corporation is an insane person, but I mean, the people running it are a cult. I mean, I, I haven't, I didn't really realize that until a couple of years ago. And so if we're not opposed, if, if we're not oppose all this nonsense, according to the First Amendment. Yeah, I mean, we should, we should oppose the cult. We should, but, but how do you, I mean, I look at it like this, we're the government. And so we have children in, in office right now and somehow they got there. And uh, what are we going to do? Argue with them? What, what are you protesting in the street for? You're protesting what? You're protesting against your children who want to stay up late. It's your children. Why are you going to argue with your children? So do you need to fight them? Do you need to kill them? No, we could just get away from them. Just go away. That's what I've been telling people since the 90s is you're not going to stop the IRS. It'll stop itself. It's going to shut itself down. It's insane. So stay out of the way. Just do things legally and stay out of the way. I don't know if that, you know, I mean, I'm not saying forget your rights, but don't depend on the government for a remedy. And it, it seems like maybe I'm a hypocrite in saying that because I'm always you know, I have a whole process where I, I have to use the court system, but sometimes we have to do that. But just realize it is really not your remedy. That's why I have people when I'm working with them on debt situations, I'm not actually trying to win a case. I mean, if I win, fine, but I'm actually trying to solve the client's problem, whether or not the case is won or lost in court by doing things outside of the court, even though I might use the court. So I don't know if that answers your question, but First Amendment, you know, People have the right to say whatever they want. They've always had that right. The First Amendment came along and said, we're going to form a government and um, we're going to place a restriction on the government that says it cannot interfere with the exercise of that right that we already had. That's what the First Amendment is. 
I know I'm preaching to the choir. Anything else out there? What do you guys think cryptos will do? Any, anybody out there claim to be an expert on when should I sell my Bitcoin? <laughs> I already sold a lot of it, but um, anyways, I'll, I'll just share some with you. I met with a gentleman uh, on Tuesday morning. I went out to his property. He invited me out there. It was Jim Gale um, for Food Forest. Food Forest Abundance, I think is his website. It's amazing. I mean, this guy, this is the future, okay? This is what I'm talking about associations because, so this guy uh, got this land and, he, and he's building it out in, in these permaculture locations and he's showing you how to do this. He's had all, had all these plans and it's landscaping really. And so basically he's turning your lawn into a beautiful forest of food that you can pretty much provide most of your uh, food supply and whatever else you need with it. So, um, but I'm just saying, People are wanting to be out of the system in one way or another, and we've been woken up in some way where maybe it was the tax system that got us to, to, to start taking paying attention. And then we're like, okay, well, it's not just about taxes anymore. It's about our entire society, and uh, it's the act actual access to land. And and for years, the IRS, for decades, the IRS has been used to to inhibit our ability to do that. And now we're we're finally seeing that. You think they taught that cryptos top out in 2024, meaning where is that the end of cryptos and I should sell and that'll be the, and then what, what am I going to buy with it? Dollars? Sounds That's like I'm going backwards. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. All where right. are you going? Right now, if you try to buy land with it, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hydroponic systems are great. I mean, really, we need to start using our land in better ways. I mean, it was Tom Jefferson that brought the, the lawn idea. I mean, I'm in Florida, so we got lawns everywhere. Um, he brought that from Paris. That was Tom Jefferson who brought the lawn idea. It's beautiful. I love my neighbor's lawn, but he's the one that has to spend a thousand dollars a year to keep it nice. I don't. Mine doesn't look as good as his, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I mean, really what we should have is um, we should be like in, in Bulgaria where my wife is from, they, they grow food in their front yards. They have beautiful vines and olives and tomatoes. And when you walk on someone's front yard, you're walking under a lattice, it's all shaded. <clears throat> It's all shaded and you can just pull a, pick a tomato and eat it on your way up to the front door. It's so incredible. We just don't do that here. So wonderful. Yeah. It, it, it yeah just really. like, there's this guy on the internet who, um, his name is John Kohler and he's, he, he has a, a YouTube channel called Grow Your Own Greens. And he is yeah. specialized in learning how to grow things in desert. Yeah, I saw that. Fantastic. And it should yeah. be. I, I told my, I was, I always had this weird conversation with my mother when I was old, when I was a teenager. And I asked her things like that. Like, mom, why don't we just grow food in, in, in the desert? I mean, we put some person on the moon. It shouldn't be a problem to figure out how to get water and, and nutrients to the desert. We just bring it there. You know, I, I remember when I was 12 years old, I asked my mom, you know, about the news. And I said, why do they keep saying on the news, all this national debt? She says, well, all the countries owe each other money. And I said to her, now I'm 12. I said, well, why don't why don't they just subtract all the debt that they owe each other and balance it out, and then whatever's left over, then they work on that. <laughs> Gee, that's a smart idea. Just stared at me <laughs> like I just like I just kicked the dog or something. She's like, I don't know, John. <laughs> you know. Anyways, uh, and someone's asking about the PMA, so that's why I'm, I'm trying to explain. So I, I guess if you're talking about why is a six-year fiasco the PMA? being prosecuted is this is this art or what's the guy's name up in uh, uh pennsylvania the 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 amish farmer uh, he's he's being attacked by the usda or something well you can take a pma and ruin it i think the guy stepped out of his boundary or got tricked into it or something and then he got into a, a decree with the government and then it, it's it's the path is downward spiral from there so you can destroy a PMA. That's why I tell people your PMA, a document that describes a PMA is for you to understand how this working relationship is established and how other people can come into it. And if it's a lot of people, they can go see how it works. The PMA itself does not provide a shield against those who would intrude upon it. Your relationship with other people is the PMA. And that relationship is bulletproof if you set it up properly. Like, um, here's a just great example. How do speakeasies operate? Well, they don't anymore, but how did they operate? You told your friend who told your friend who told your friend, you know, mm, word of word mouth. Of and uh, 
we all show up and we either bring our own booze or we, we buy some and uh, we bought it and uh, we did it so we did it privately and uh, the cops knew about it, but they didn't want to fool with it and whatever. And that worked because that is how people actually relate to each other. They don't relate to each other because there's a document with words on it. Although it is helpful to have that, um, just know that the PMA, you know, can be pierced if uh, if it's not truly a PMA. And I, I hate to say, yeah, I mean, maybe it is truly a PMA in some cases and the government just wants to overstep. So maybe you do have a remedy, but uh, there is that going on. We have a war going on, so. So the courts, the government's trying to get a ruling saying Pennsylvania farmer, yeah, Amos is uh, organic farm to allow the food and safety right. So execute administrative subpoena to search his farm for, yeah, report published. Yeah, so of course, it's just an intrusion. It's an intrusion. You have a government intrusion. So yeah, okay, let's, let's call this a tort. He's got a long road ahead of him. I'm sorry to say. But, and again, I don't think it's about yeah. Amos. I think this attack on Amos Miller's farm is, uh, is about saying to people like us, you could be next, right? I think it's what it's about. And maybe trying to start a, uh, set up a precedent that they can use against others. So but all you can do is try to follow the law and do the best thing. You're gonna always have this, this you know, corruption out there. And the, and the map behind me, I like, um, I like nautical type um, equipment and gear. I like sailing. I don't sail very much. I should do more of it, but I like sailing. I learned to sail, my, my dad taught me, and um, I just like nautical things. And I just like this map because this map demonstrates what I like to call people groping in the dark. And I think we still are. We're still trying to find our way in this, in this world. And the map behind me is an old version of people traveling the earth in a boat and actually coming with a pretty close drawing estimation of the land masses with no aerial view. And that's why I like this map. I, I appreciate you asking that. I never really gave it much thought. It, that was in my mind. But uh, when I got this, when I saw this, it's just a a five or 600 year old version of people trying to grope their way in the dark. <laughs> and we still are. So Heather, what, what else you got? I was just gonna, um, I had two things. One, I was just gonna say, as far as self sustainability or whatever, I didn't know if, um, You'd ever heard of the Earth ships in Taos, New Mexico? They're fantastic. Have you, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Have you, oh, my gosh. Like, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? But, like, I mm. got into gardening when COVID started up and all that. And um, I, know, I think a lot of people, I got on a whole bunch of different gardening websites, like uh, group yeah. chats and stuff yeah. locally and, like, you know, nationwide and everything. And a lot of us were noticing that um, we were having the same issues with uh, infestations, like kind of peculiar, and then like maybe possible seed um, tampering because there is we were that. all having a lot of this. Did you notice that? There I don't is know that. If you barred chicken, it, but... chicken feed is now causing sterilization in chickens in some farms. Oh, so they man, polluted right. our food supply all the way around. We're going to yeah. have a lot of work ahead of us. So. Uh, but, clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other thing I, I wanted to ask um, your perspective on is because uh, my roommate has um, put um, some of his money into um, silver and gold and, and it's been dropping, mm -hmm. I guess, consistently quite a bit. Any thoughts on that? Buy more. Buy more. Buy when it's going down. <laughs> buy more. Yeah. It's always a good bet. It's Just don't tie good. up a lot of your it's capital good. into gold and silver. It's not a performing asset. So I have a lot of gold and silver, but I also have other things that make money. So you want that. You want to create relationships. I love doing joint ventures. You would think I'm going to go out and buy assets, whatever. I don't do that. I love making a deal with somebody that we both together make a bunch of money. I love doing deals where um, the whole contract is, hey, let's split the net. <laughs> you bring your resource. I bring my resource. And we just, we hopefully, we keep the most money out of it. And then we split what's left over. So, uh, yeah, that's what I would do. I would instead, you know, buy some more gold when the price is going down. Don't be afraid. Don't be squeamish. You didn't make a bad decision. You're not trying to make a lot of money with gold and silver. You're trying to avoid the loss and you don't want to put a lot in there. You're not trying to live your life by avoiding things. That's not how you live your life. You live your life by taking risks. So you definitely want to have some money out there trying to work for you. That's what I would tell Thanks. them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right, Luke. What's you? Uh, what do you think? 
Hey, uh, I had a quick question in regards to an earlier conversation we had. Um, yep. If uh, you are trying to um, not pay the the uh, demand by the IRS, and you're uh, working in a uh, let's say, for example, a gig economy where you're getting 1099. Is there any way that they can um, attach that like they could a regular W-2 job? Yeah, if you're receiving that money in your name with your SSN. And so it's a very simple transition to tell them whoever's paying you to pay your company and give them a W-9 Okay. and problem solved. All right. I didn't know because if they wouldn't see the money till after the end of the year, that they wouldn't be able to, to garnish. Well, they'd only see it if it's in your name. And yeah, it would take them until the end of the year. Yeah. When they got the 1099, yeah. If you're doing gigs like stints, as they used to call it, and they're they're always different, then nothing to be concerned about. Like if you're a painter and you just go paint houses and stuff, the IRS can't touch you. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all. So um, appreciate the the conversation. I think it was really beneficial. Um, I hope that was a good subject matter. But anyways, um, I know we'll do some more calls. They're just not my regular schedule. Um, look forward to talking to each of you uh, when you get a chance. So have a nice weekend. Thank Bye you. Bye for Jim. now. Thank All you. Right.